This is to introduce the Br Brighton and Rottingdean Seashore Electric Tram Road, which was uh, designed or inspired by Magnus Volk of the Volk Electric Railway, still running in Brighton as a uh, preserved narrow gauge electric railway along the seashore, along the front. And because of the nature of the uh, terrain further east of its terminus, Magnus Volk decided on something a little different to uh, provide another tourist experience and to demonstrate the effectiveness of electric traction. And so he devised uh, with his um, engineers uh, an extraordinary railway which had a gauge of 18 feet and was to run parallel with the seashore with the beach uh, from uh, Banjo Groin in Brighton uh, further east out to Rottingdean uh, all in all taking about 35 minutes. Now you might think that that's fair enough it's straightforward but of course it's quite much more than that because the uh, rail car that was devised, built by the Gloucester Railway Carriage and Wagon Company, um, was absolutely extraordinary. It was, it stood on four uh, enormous uh, pier type piles which had a bogey at the bottom. Uh, so four bogies, so it's a parallel track about um, uh, just over two, each, each track is just over about two foot uh, three inches in gauge and two parallel tracks together give you the actual overall gauge of this remarkable uh, railway. Well on top of those bogies, on top of those pier like piles was a platform and uh, this was the main travelling platform for those who wish to travel on the rail car and in the centre of that was a saloon so you could travel in inside a very lovely carpeted uh, saloon with um, a, a central uh, seating and with aspidistras and other greenery growing up uh, in the middle of that and on the top of the saloon uh, which was accessible from a set of steps at one side uh, was another standing and seating area and altogether uh, the car was licensed to carry about 150 passengers uh, and weighed about 45 tonnes. The line was short-lived. It was uh, opened in uh, at the, towards the end of 1896. On the, the actual opening ceremony was on the 28th of November 1896 uh, and it was opened by the Mayor of Brighton and then it opened to the public fully on the um, 2nd of December and for a relatively small fee of a sixpence in each direction uh, you could take a trip a half hour just over half hour trip out at sea because the this is standing below low tide so for most of the time it's actually uh, as it were like a pier standing out into the water but this is parallel to the seashore as opposed to extending out into it like a normal pier well, what you did is you got onto the rail car uh, having paid your money and you then uh, travelled slowly about eight miles an hour at its top speed out to Rottingdean uh, to the east and it took about between 32 and 36 minutes to complete the journey there and then the, then the journey back and it was quite a remarkable uh, vehicle it was actually in charge of a qualified ship's captain but it was driven from either end like a tram and it had very tram-like um, controls and these operated the electric motors uh, which were uh, based in the uh, submerged bogies and um, they were powered from an overhead side catenary uh, which connected into the um, side the landward side of the rail car and uh, it was very popular and uh, it certainly could pack in a lot of people. The um, interior was particularly finely uh, decorated with all sorts of the uh, plush that you would expect from 
uh, a, Victor a late Victorian uh, vehicle of this type. And altogether, uh, it um, carried, it was very successful for a relatively small number of years because uh, in the uh, uh, in, in uh, 1896, soon after its uh, opening, the, um, the rail car was affected by one of the most severe storms that Brighton had experienced. And so this was within just a couple of weeks of the opening of the line. And the rather ornate station, which had been built on the end of a specially constructed pier, which extended out from um, near Paston Place in Brighton. Uh, that was re really badly, quite badly damaged, as was the rail car. And in fact, part of it, uh, Paston Place was the name given to the jetty. And eventually that, that jetty had to be demolished and a much simpler version was established. And uh, really it, it does, gener does indicate just how difficult it was to operate such um, such a railway and uh, the, the overall uh, extent of the line uh, just traveling there in front of the um, built up area of Brighton then out to pass uh, Rodine School and on to Rottingdean uh, uh, Pier which at that time which was a very simple affair and Rottingdean at that time was a an isolated little place just to the east of Brighton so uh, Overall, there was no major, uh, it wasn't expected to carry any major sort of uh, regular passengers. The whole idea of it was to be a, uh, a, a, a tourist experience. And it continued for, the, for those last few years of the uh, 19th century, providing a most extraordinary uh, and a most extraordinary appearance. It was known as variously as the spider uh, rail car or the daddy long legs rail car or railway and it, uh, it, it, it opened right the way through and ran for about five years until closing in about um, 1902. Now the idea originally for uh, Volks was to run his electric railway on right the way through to um, Rottingdean but as I said earlier the landscape really didn't lend itself to that type of uh, structure that type of building so this is why he came up with this extraordinary vehicle which is virtually unique in railway uh, history so I'm uh, having given that brief outline of the history, uh, I'm now going to show you uh, what I've done to recreate the uh, Pioneer, the name of the rail car, for the Brighton and Rottingdean Seashore Electric Tram Road. These are my models uh, which I've created to uh, reproduce the um, Daddy Long Legs Railway. I suppose that's the best way to call it, or Spider Railway, as it was called, also on some of those postcards. And so, what they comprise uh, is the track, first of all. So that's a single piece of of um, track. I'll I'll go into Surveyor and show you how all these are put together. Uh, here's the rail car itself, of course. That's Pioneer, and um, here's the station. It's I've had to make a few simplifications and minor alterations just to. Uh, first of all to keep the size down because it really does uh, go to quite a few polys and um, also just to make it functional and uh, so there's a station building here which um, is just like any other station in trains except it's raised up on uh, a pier as you can see there and the actual platform is the bit at the end here although we do have um, quite a few load points passenger load points uh, behind the station, uh, where are we, is the uh, pier section and that's a, a straightforward spline and um, so we've got the track, we've got the pier station, we've got the spline, we've got the rail car and what we've also got are the pylons, the catenary that um, carried the wire and what I've had to do with this is I've had to carry the wire over the top of the passengers. I don't know if this was 
uh, done or not. I couldn't see any other way in which the rail car could actually travel uh, as far as the platform without having a uh, power, so power source. So if we just take the rail car, I think this is the right direction. Yeah, here we go. You might be able to hear the sound of a tram and waves coming in. I thought that would be quite a nice way of doing it. Slow it right down. Here we go and stop. And then the doors open. The little gateways open and the doors into the saloon open. Passengers get on and off. Uh, I've actually allowed for, you might be able to see there, I've actually allowed for 156 passengers. And even that seems to me like I could pack in quite a few more but I'm not going to, I think that's, that's enough. And it's using a variant of um, John Whelan's uh, 1890s passenger set, which he very kindly did for me. Uh, and he removed those who were reading newspapers and pushing trolleys and that sort of thing. Uh, because I thought, you know, if they're reading a newspaper, they're not very keen tourists. So let's take it, um, let's take it over in the other direction now. So I've got 156 load points there on that passenger car and um, it's only going at 3 miles an hour at the moment. You don't want it to go more than about 8 miles an hour. And those are people leaving the station there. I'm just going to stop it abruptly. And uh, so what of course you have to do is you have to get the landscape right. So as I've uh, mentioned before when dealing with shipping and docks and harbours, that sort of thing, you need first of all to get the terrain correct. This is just the straightforward uh, grid that you get on a, on a basic, the basic grid that you get in trains. So this is at zero metres height. So what you need to do is to lower that, I, I think a couple of metres, to get it down to the uh, below sea level and put the water in at zero, give it about, so in other words you give them about six, six or seven feet of water for it to run in, colour the ground, uh, you know, sort of like from shingly, sandy, yellow down to some sort of muddy colour, and um, well let's go to, let's exit driver and go into, not say, just go into surveyor, and you can see here the uh, way in which I've uh, created this. So the different components are, if we have a look again, so here's our track. So that's a straightforward track spline, but it's of this extraordinary wide track. Now you don't want to have too great a curve. I mean, don't be going off in all sorts of crazy directions because it did run just parallel to what was more or less uh, a west-east uh, route uh, parallel to a, a west-east shore. So you can have some gradual variation but don't go absolutely wacky with uh, and don't put any points in there were no points no turnouts so here's the pylon and the way you want to do the pylon spline is to let's just bring it into position and to position each of the spline points directly over the track points that's been positioned I've carefully positioned that so the distance between the uh, the track here allows for the trolley poles or whatever they are pickups to actually actually a little bit out there you can see um, so because I haven't positioned that quite right but you want to make sure that the spline points are carefully placed I mean you want to go top down to do this it's worth a bit of mucking about till you get it right top down and get it precisely over the track spline points and that means then that the the power wire is going to be in the correct position for the rail car to connect up let's have a look see if we can see the rail here's the rail car so let's stick it on and here she is and the wire is connecting up pretty close there was not there's no um, because it's a single wire and these connections just come out and join it, there's no like a normal catenary on a modern railway where you've got actually like a, 
a bar running underneath that wire so you can you can be pretty flexible in how you position it um, this has to be positioned absolutely spot on to get the correct uh, connection up let's just have a look at the station now what I've done there uh, I'm just gonna take a few minutes to find the station because I've got a lot here all with my initialists in the front and uh, a lot of as you can see a heck of a lot of um, models there we are Brighton and Rottingdean Seashore Electric Railway Station so here it is and what I've done there is I've allowed 40 on and 40 off in the station area and uh, here what you've got are some some connecting points so this acts like an ordinary station so we can connect the track the standard track up to it didn't run far beyond this the uh, Paston place only a few yards beyond so you may just want to do that if you want to put a um, buffers it had no buffers as far as I can see you could put an in invisible buffers in there if you wanted to and you'll see here that I've put modeled some catenary connections and pylons there and the key thing when you come to uh, put in the pylon is as I say is to get one end or to get each end rather exactly positioned I'm, I'm looking at this at an angle so I'm not being very precise I suppose if I was to go up and then let's have a go see if I can position that but I just it's gonna let me yeah there we are I've got it now and you've got to try and somehow just get it absolutely on top of that and then here what you'll find is join it up with the end there and what I've done is I've allowed for the cable this cable up to here you can see there's an, oh, an ugly join there because I haven't got it precisely right so I couldn't find any way think of any way of doing this other than there we are look now it should sort of connect up so it's actually at that joint there over on this side so there's a bit of forgiveness there but there you can see how you connect up your uh, catenary to give the power effect as I say passengers um, loader I couldn't find any sort of gateway here so health and safety you can forget that as far as the Victorians are concerned and of course when the rail car does come along as you can see over here uh, just like any carriage doors what opens up are there's a couple of great gates there and another couple of gates there and also I let the doors into the saloon open up as well and if we just go forward a bit you can see actually inside the saloon people sat down and I've got some flowers plants and that in there I appreciate they don't look too brilliant but I was trying to keep the um, poly count down as much as I could and we've got the um, life belts there we've got the bell these appear to be lamps they were in the original uh, along with the lifeboat how everybody was going to get in the one lifeboat I just don't know um, but I didn't I've never seen any night time running and nothing that shows it illuminated so I just put them in because I thought they looked nice there was a flag as well but I decided to leave that out in the end because it was just getting far too um, complicated we just go back to um, I just go into uh, yeah why not just just start that up with all those extra bits we put in uh, you will have heard the so let's try and you'll have heard the sound of the tram and the I just turn it get it moving a bit hopefully you can now hear there's a sort of a track there's a bit of a tram sound and, and the waves coming in and that was their bell so as it approached which was about all you all you got by way of a warning I think uh, when it arrived although it was pretty obvious when it arrived and there's those doors opening you can see there and then we'll have a changeover of passengers 
There we are, 156 I've set it for, as you can see there. So that's the Brighton and Rottingdean Seashore Electric Railway. Uh, you've got to, uh, when you plan this out, plan to, if you plan to use it, then you've got to get the scenery right. You've got to get a seashore, so you need to get the seafloor, the beach coming up, rising up, rising up, and gradually engulfing right up to the, so this pier is at road level frankly when you get to the top so look at the postcards there's also a brilliant book on Amazon um, called The Extraordinary Daddy Longlegs Railway of Brighton by Martin Easdown E-A-S-D-O-W-N and uh, so if you want to see more about it it's mainly uh, postcard images of the this extraordinary uh, railway and um, well worth it if you like this sort of bizarre and bonkers which is which is what you know that's me all over definitely so uh this has now got to go if we just exit driver no we're not safe thank you and so this is in tain i should say t uh trains a new era as opposed to trains 2019 but it should work all right and um it's still got to go these models so there's the models are the rail car the track the pylon, the station, and the pier. And uh, I suppose I should have just demonstrated that. The pier is a spline, so it'll be as long or as short as you like. It will lock in. It does connect in okay. And I've used the poster that's actually I've used in the earlier part of this video. I put it up on the wall there, and I've done it as a sort of a two part um, advertising there. And if you want to add more figures, just place them up on the here then by all means but the actual ones that are going to be picked up for the for the um, rail car I've just sort of spread them out and done a couple of queues there just to sort of show, show that there were loads of people there was only one rail car despite the fact there were two in this display here so these are now going for beta testing and uh, it's now the end of January I would hope by about the middle of February that I'll be able to release them they will be free download freeware uh, on my website and uh, you're very welcome to download and use them and bring an absolutely wonderful marvelous crazy uh, rail car of a type you've never seen before to your own particular seaside railway layout